Hello everybody, Andy here again. Well yes, that was blue sky that you saw there and there is a big reason for that. For those of you who aren't aware, for those of you who maybe not in Northern Europe or certainly in the UK, we have something, something that's a little bit strange here, hence the, the blue skies there. You might have noticed, and the reason I came out today, no vapour trails, no contrails, whatever you call them. There are no aeroplanes flying across the UK at all today as there haven't been since Thursday at about midday. It's now Saturday about four o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And the whole of Northern Europe effectively, right down to sort of Italy, most of Spain, uh, most of Greece, I believe, right across through Russia, etc., up through Scandinavia and obviously the UK as well. All the airspace is completely closed to commercial aircraft, to anything actually above about 3,000 feet. The reason for that is, is because of an Icelandic volcano which blew its top, I think a couple of weeks ago actually, or nearly a month ago actually. But until now, obviously the, the, uh, the ash, the volcanic ash, that's been erupted out of the volcano it's still spewing it out now it's obviously gone in a different way because usually here in the UK our prevailing winds come from the sort of southwest 70% of the time or so they reckon but recently we've, we've been getting a lot of easterly winds and it's an easterly wind today and I know that doesn't completely equate to why this has happened because the, the winds that matter really are, are higher up in the atmosphere and they've been going the wrong way as well so the the cloud of dust has blown down across the UK and across Northern Europe and that is very dangerous to commercial aircraft. Anyone who knows uh, might remember an incident back in, the, I think it was 1982 or something, where a British Airways 747 jumbo jet was flying across uh, Indonesia, I believe it was, on its way to Australia. It unwittingly flew through a cloud of volcanic ash and all four engines of the aeroplane were contaminated and shut down because of the intake of this, this ash, because obviously jet engines were, were intaking air, etc. And luckily, the, the plane descended from about 30 odd thousand feet to something like 15,000 feet, 10,000 feet. That's how far it glided, that's how far it dropped before the engines thankfully started again. So, as a precaution, all aircraft here are stopped, hence, as I said, the, the nice clear skies. And anyone else has noticed, now I know that this was noticed uh, after 9 11 in the U USA when the airspace in the United States was shut down for two or three days and people commented about how clear the skies were because so much of our clouds do actually come, especially the light clouds, do actually come from vapour trails, from contrails, from the exhaust or whatever you want to call it, of, of a commercial aircraft. So <laughs> there you go, something that's happening. But this has got a couple of things that I'm, why I'm talking about. One is because I'm due to fly out to America next week and as I said, the, the, it's, there's no real end in sight for this at the moment. Obviously everybody's hoping that there is, but no one can take a chance on this. I fly out to America on Thursday and I may well talk about that a bit more and certainly if I don't go I should be talking about it and if I do I will be as well for other reasons. But my son should actually be flying out to New York on Monday, as I said, this is Saturday, and um, I know all airspace is still going to be shut basically until at least Sunday. There might be the odd aeroplane that flies out or comes in because of little gaps, but nothing really structured, no real scheduled planes, should we say. And it's just changed, it just carries on, this is changing the, the way that we are. Just the whole of Northern Europe is effectively cut off by air. Anybody, and you think all those thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who are now displaced across the world, it's not just in the U in the UK, there are people in America trying to get back to UK, there are Americans in the UK trying to get back to America, and just about every nationality across the world has been affected by this in one way or another. And maybe this is something that no one's ever thought about, just one simple volcano. And this particular volcano I don't think has, has erupted for quite some time. Its sister volcano, which is even bigger, last erupted in the 1820s and, I think, and erupted for two years. Now, there's no way that we could suffer <laughs> the closure of our airspace, airspace for two years because obviously so long ago it didn't matter but we've all probably seen paintings by people like Turner over here in the UK uh, of amazing sunsets and that. and that wasn't necessarily that particular that was through Krakatoa or one of these other volcanic eruptions this ash goes everywhere it shuts down everything as we've seen here and this is now starting to have an effect or certainly will do whether it be commercially because of the, the airlines the tourist industry all the people that are involved with the airline industry aren't getting any revenue all the airport shops are all shut the airports are effectively deserted there's nobody there the people who work there the airlines themselves must be losing millions and millions of pounds every day if this carries on what's going to happen there's going to be a big economic uh, dimension to this as well apart from the fact that as we all know now globalization has come in so much of our food so much of 
uh, everything, our everyday items that we use, our commercial goods or whatever, come from abroad. Yes, some come by ship, but we can't go back to that again. We can't go back to having ships taking months and months to get between A and B. Apart from all the businesses and that, commercial travel, people commute now by air to work. <laughs> Maybe they'd, they'd be re-evaluating that now. And bands, music, uh, anything like that, all these artists and that who zigzag across the world here and there by air to, to fulfill all uh, engagements. I know the Coachella, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, music festival is happening in California at the moment, this particular weekend. And already some acts have had to pull out because they're stuck here in the UK or they're elsewhere. They can't make it there. I saw uh, an article that, and a link to an article, I think it was in the New York Times, mentioning about this, about the, uh, more of the classical side. But so many concerts in big kind Carnegie Hall style uh, concert halls are now having to rearrange because people are stuck all over the world. These little tentacles start to filter out. Anyone who's not flying is probably thinking this is quite good, especially if you near, live near a flight path. It must be great. The skies are lovely and clear and, they're, that, <laughs> and that is quite nice. And I suppose if I wasn't flying myself, I might be sort of laying back and thinking this is actually quite good, especially if you live, as I said, close, you haven't got the noise, you haven't got the pollution and everything that goes with living near an airport or on a uh, flight path, should we say. But it affects everybody. I don't suppose Within the next few days, there won't be many people who won't know somebody who's been affected in some way or other by this. And as I said, increasingly, we will be affected because our food will start to run out. We Here in the UK, what it's like where you live, I don't know, we import things into the UK which we could quite easily grow here ourselves. But we don't because it's cheap to import them from Africa, from Southern Europe or something like that. That stuff is now rotting wherever it is. That's going to have a fallback, you know, there's going to be a fallback to that for the people who produce these goods. They're not getting their money for them, are they? So this is it's a far-reaching argument. I think this is something that people need to think about. Maybe there's a big re-evaluation that's going to have to come out of this. If one single volcano um, can make that amount of difference and potentially make that amount of difference, okay, it's happened in a part of the world where it can have the most effect, unless it was somewhere like America or somewhere, maybe some parts of China or Japan or something like that may have that same effect, I don't know. You can probably think of other examples as well. But um, these things are usually out of sight, out of mind. And uh, it's one of those things that nobody can do anything about. It's not like a strike, it's not anything like that. We are just bystanders in this. It's a, what they call an act of God, I suppose. <laughs> I, well, I'm not going to go into that argument. I should leave that for your imagination. But uh, this is one of those things we have no effect over, but just think of the effect that it has over us. It's quite frightening in quite a long way. If you think about the technology and that that we've got now, how we rely on air travel, how we rely on other things as well. If that was to be taken away from us, even for a short amount of time, I've seen the difference it started to make personally to my life, yes, but also in a more far-reaching way as well. And the implications of it, as I said, are really quite frightening. So there you go. So if I don't make it to America next week, now you know why. I should be very annoyed, but that will be another vlog entirely because uh, that's something else I'd like to talk about maybe. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for your time. And I shall uh, sit here on the beach and enjoy the uh, nice clear skies. No noise at all. I'm here a light aircraft I think obviously under the uh, ash cloud and um, by the way there's no evidence of it here I haven't seen any evidence no dust or anything it's 20 30,000 feet up in the air out of out of sight out of mind once again it's not something you can touch it's not tangible we can't see it and yet it's having that that overall effect on us anyway I am going to leave it there thanks for your time I'll speak to you again soon goodbye